I've been diving into robotics, and I want to start designing my own components. Eventually, I'd like to build a tiny factory line in my garage and try to manufacture something small and simple. But I have a problem. My CAD skills aren't yet good enough to design components. So to level up my CAD skills, I decided to build something that every great factory needs, a conveyor belt. But designing a real conveyor belt seems a little bit too ambitious. So I decided to design a toy conveyor belt instead. And since Factorio is the greatest factory game of all time, I'm going to design it to look like the transporter belt from the game. There are a couple of goals for the design. I want it to be small enough to hold my hand and fit on a desk, something you can pick up and play with easily. Also, it needs to be functional. The belt needs to move and be able to convey things. And as much as possible, I want it to have that transporter belt aesthetic. With those goals in mind, I used this reference photo and sketched out a design. The belt looks like it rests on three sprockets, which are presumably attached to shafts that slot into the side rails. It's hard to tell what material the belt links are made of, they look a lot like a tank tread, but also seem like they could be a more conventional thin rubbery conveyor belt material. Because the toy will be made out of 3D printed plastic, I opted to make them more tank tread like. I also added a base to make it handheld. And lastly, I put a hand crank on the side of one of the shafts to make it easy to move the belt. All the other components depend on it, so the first thing I designed was a sprocket. Sprockets look a lot like gears, but they're different. Gears are designed to mesh with other gears, whereas sprockets engage with a chain. The Factorio conveyor belt has this characteristic eight tooth sprocket, so I wanted to make one that looked similar. Instead of designing one from scratch, I found this eight tooth sprocket on McMaster car that looks pretty close, and I used that as a reference. To make the part in CAD, I created a tooth profile and then cut away the profile from a cylinder. The cylinder has a nine millimeter hole bored out for the shaft that the sprocket will be attached to. I knew I wanted a sprocket with an outside diameter of 32 millimeters. Then I used the proportions of the reference photo to get a rough inner diameter. I drew the tooth profile to match the reference, extruded it, patterned it, and finally removed the finished profile from the cylinder. The three sprockets will be attached to nine millimeter shafts. One of the shafts is a drive shaft and the other two are idle. The only difference is that the drive shaft has a square shaped slot bored out for the hand crank. To make the parts in CAD, I simply extruded a circle to make a cylinder and for the drive shaft extruded out a square hole. Each sprocket needs to be fixed to a shaft. Instead of using something like a shaft coupler that requires set screws, I decided to use a simple shaft key. A shaft key works by cutting a keyway in the sprocket and a key seat in the shaft. Then you make a shaft key that you press fit in between the shaft and sprocket to fix them together. When fixed to the shafts, the sprockets need to be perfectly centered. To do this, I made a simple spacing jig by boring out a cylinder with a height exactly the same height as this height. Then, during assembly, I can put the sprocket on top of the jig and hammer in the shaft and the shaft key so that the sprocket is perfectly centered. Next up is the belt link design. This part was the trickiest for me and took the most time. There are a couple of realizations that helped me design it. One, wherever the belt link touches the sprocket, there will need to be a cylindric roller element. Two, the roller elements will be a fixed distance away from each other. Three, the link needs to be able to rotate a certain amount with respect to another link. Given these constraints, there are different ways to go about the design. If you look at tank tread designs, often each link has a shape that coincides with two roller surfaces in a way where they pattern together. By modifying the shape a bit, we can get the look we're after. So to make the part in CAD, I extruded a single part that coincided with both roller cylinders. Then I cut out a middle section and two side sections to create a profile that patterns with other belt links. Next, the teeth profile of the sprocket was removed. And finally, I filleted these edges. These edges guide the sprocket tooth into the pocket of the link, and it's absolutely critical that they are rounded to prevent the belt from falling off. At this point, the link would be functional, but doesn't have that factorial look, so I added a bit of material to the top in the shape of the transporter belt link and removed some material off the sides. For the distinctive yellow arrow, I simply extruded an arrow shape and added a little notch on the bottom that will press fit into a slot, which I added to half of the belt links. To connect one belt link to another, there is a 1.8 millimeter rod with a cap at one end. This will slide through two belt links to connect them. It was important to adjust the diameter of these rods so that they were tight enough so that there was very little play when you pull the links apart but not so tight that they won't rotate with respect to one another. For the side rail, I extruded the rail shape and added some rivet features by booleaning together a revolved rivet part. I also bored out holes for the shafts. There's a slight curve on the face that the end of the shaft touches to reduce friction. Next up is the base, which is a simple extruded shape with holes for the side rails to fit into. 
And finally, the hand crank is a simple square swept along a crank curve with a cylinder handle that gets press fit into the crank. All the parts will be 3D printed and most of them are designed to print flat on the build plate without any modifications. However, the thin rods that connect the belt links together are too thin to print well vertically on the build plate. So instead, I cut the rods in half in the slicer and printed each side flat. The rods work just fine when both halves are inserted, so there's no need to glue them together after printing. To begin assembling, gather all the 3D printed parts. First assemble the belt, starting by attaching the arrows onto half of the belt links. An easy way to do this is to push a link against another link for support, and then slightly tap the arrow in with a rubber mallet. Once all the arrows are secured, lay out the links so that each link with an arrow is adjacent to a link without an arrow. Then take two rod halves to form a full rod and insert it between two links to join them. This is a tight fit, so it might require a little pressure to push the rod completely through. And the final link bridges both ends to complete the belt assembly. Next, install all the rod caps. To fix the sprockets to the shafts, place a sprocket on top of the spacing jig and hammer the shaft into it with a rubber mallet until the shaft's base sits flush with the tabletop. When you're doing this, make sure the key seat lines up with the keyway on the shaft. Then, hammer the key shaft into place. The hand crank can be used to help get the key shaft fully into position. Hammer the crank knob onto the crank shaft to assemble the hand crank. For the base assembly, position the side rail with a crank hole in the top right mounting point. Press the rails into the base only halfway initially. They'll be fully secured after the belt is installed. Then insert the shafts into the belt, ensuring the drive shaft is at the top. When installing the belt, first secure the top and middle shafts. Then, while holding the middle shaft in place, insert the final shaft. Once the belt is in position, use a spacing jig to hammer the rail posts fully into the base. And that's it! You can use the hand crank and try it out. When not in use, there is a dedicated hole on the back of the assembly to store the hand crank. So there you have it. It's definitely not perfect, but it's fun to pick up from the desk and play with, kind of like a fidget spinner. If you want to build your own, there's a link in the description. Alright, see ya.